we're starting the poem tale of custard the dragon today and we're just discussing about dragons and how they are very big scary creatures and uh, yes what is so scary about them is that they breathe fire and because of that we think it is going to be very difficult to tame them right now with the poem that we are going to do it is a ballad what is a ballad it's a poem that tells a story it's written in the form of a story and it is very musical it is very rhythmic and it is like generally how you think poetry should be if you remember in your class 9th we had that legend of northland did that yes so where you have the saint coming and asking for food and the lady she's wanted to make a small small cake and in the end the yeah so right do you remember that yes so it was written in the form of a ballad okay right about the saint and that lady baker yes so now here this poem is also like that and this is the tale of custard the dragon now when you look at dragons you expect them to be very scary fierce dangerous nobody wants to go near a dragon oh no it's too scary right and like yes uh, we we're talking about here even pets are they you have dogs at home and uh, we we see a big notice outside many homes beware of the dog and you wonder oh my god there's a big notice outside beware of the dog and inside you expect a big ferocious dog right who's really going to make you feel scared right we we don't expect a big ferocious animals to be timid and scared we don't we don't we expect to be scared by them isn't it right now in this poem there is a dragon and his name is custard right so imagine a big dog coming out and you calling uh, that uh, softy right what the uh, anti climax isn't it right so you have like when you feel like okay there's a dragon or there's a big dog and the name will also be something like that something very royal and scary sounding but here in a poem that we are going to discuss there's a dragon his name is custard and he is not a scary dragon he is scared himself right he's very timid he's very afraid and in fact the other animals that are there as pets they keep on bullying the dragon right they make fun of the dragon that look at you right and the dragon would love to be in his cage to be away from the other animals right so once again here we are going to talk about appearances and it is also about in difficult circumstances it is so you could be a small cat you could be a small dog but in difficulty you might show extreme courage and if you're a dragon it does not mean every uh, you know like uh, hour of the day or after every 10 15 minutes you keep on breathing fire so as to remind people that see i'm a dragon right you better notice me and i am so fierce so here in this poem it's a i am want to give away what the surprise is we'll read it and we'll come to know okay so we all know what a dragon looks like we all know the dragons are very fierce and keeping a dragon as a pet who would imagine that but yes in this poem what is there there is a pet dragon what does the dragon do what is the story about so the tale of custard the dragon this is written in the form of a ballad as i told you it's a poem that tells a story and it is written in the form of a story only and yes so here this is in fact it's a parody what is a parody parody is making fun of a situation there is you know like a very what a making a fun of that incident 
So showing someone in their true colors, people who behave very brave, who are very courageous, but when a crisis comes, when a difficult situation comes, what happens to these people, right? Where do they go? Where do they disappear? So let's look at the poem. Belinda lived in a little white house with a little black kitten and a little gray mouse and a little yellow dog and a little red wagon and a really or truly or little pet dragon. So see how beautifully it is written. And the poet has taken certain liberties, it's changing the spelling. But first let's enjoy the poem and then we'll just come to that aspects. And really, or oh, truly, or oh, little pet dragon. Really, truly, little pet dragon. Little dragon. Oh, the irony, isn't it? Now, the name of the little black kitten was Ink. Black kitten, Ink. The little gray mouse, she called him Blink. And the little yellow dog was sharp as mustard, but the dragon was a coward and she called him custard. So she had pets, Belinda. She had a kitten, a mouse, a dog, and a dragon, right? So all the other animals were small animals, right? So there's a tiny little, there's a kitten here, there's a tiny little mouse, there's a little dog, but the dragon was a surprising of all. The dragon was a coward. This is not your brave, ferocious uh, dragons you come across or we see, we read about. He was a coward. So she named him Custard. So we're surprised why the Custard, the dragon, because the dragon was a coward. Who's a coward? A person is not brave, okay? Right. Custard, the dragon, had big, sharp teeth. He looked like a dragon. There's no doubt about him. He looked like a very ferocious dragon. Custard, the dragon, had big, sharp teeth and spikes on top of him and scales underneath. Mouth like a fireplace, chimney for a nose, and really or truly or daggers on his toes. So Custard the dragon had big sharp teeth, right? It spikes, yes, it spikes the scales there, right? Uh, uh, on the top of his body. And he had scales on his belly. And his mouth was like a fireplace. Fire came out of his mouth and smoke coming out of his nose like a chimney. And he really, truly daggers, daggers, a sharp claws. He looked like a dragon. He behaved like one, yes, but he was not a brave dragon. He was a cowardly dragon. Cleo, yes? Nyata, no problem. We'll, we'll discuss it also. Belinda was as brave as a barrel full of bears. And ink and blink chased lions down the stairs. Mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage. But Custard cried for a nice safe cage. So Belinda was very brave, just like a barrel full of bears, right? So it, it, it is that comparison there. So she was a very brave person and she could uh, handle any kind of situation. Even ink and blink. Who's ink? Ink is the kitten. Blink, the little mouse. They chase lions down the stairs. So brave. Mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage. But Custard cried for a nice safe cage. Look at the stanza. There are so many similes. Yes, now look at it here. Look at this stanza. Belinda was as brave as a barrel full of bears. Simile. Note down, please. Write down. What is it? It is a simile. 
right? Because the comparison, what has Belinda been compared to as a barrel full of bears? And ink and blink chased lions down the stairs. Look at them, small animals running after lions. Mustard was as brave as a tiger in a rage. What is rage? Anger. And who was Mustard? Mustard was a dog. So all her pets were very, very brave. Except for who wasn't brave? Who was a coward? The dragon. What's the name of the dragon? Custard. And what did Custard do? Did he go chasing lions and scaring people? No. What did Custard want? He cried and he wanted to be in his cage. So that Custard was a coward. All the other pets were brave. Okay, yes. Nice. Now, just tell me here quickly, quickly. Right. So who is the poem uh, about? What is it about, the poem? It's about Belinda's pets. Why are you talking about only Custard the dragon? Why was the dragon called Custard? Because he was a cowardly dragon. Yes, because of his timid nature, because he was scared always, and he was not brave like the other pets. But the other pets, it seemed as if they were chasing lions. Belinda herself was very brave. And even the tiny mouse and the little kitten, they all were very brave, but it was only the dragon who was timid, right? And it seemed the dragon always was just crying for what? His cage, right? He wanted to be there. Now, these animals, they have been given qualities of behaving like humans, right? What do we call that? What do we call that? Personification. So there is the device of personification. When Belinda is there, yes. So Belinda is there talking about her pets. So she's discussing their qualities. It is personification, right? So they're brave and they're so ferocious and the dragon, a coward and wanting to hide and run away from the other animals and from, right, all the problems okay right yes here now mouth like a fireplace mouth like a fireplace what was the dragon's mouth like a fireplace what comes out of a fire what is there in the fireplace you want a fire over there right so the uh, mouth like a fireplace it is a simile here also it is simile Okay, right? Now look here, over here. Yes, Belinda lived in a little white house with a little black kitten and a little gray mouse. Look at the repetition over here. And lots of alliteration also. Little yellow dog and a little red wagon and really a truly a little pet dragon. So the little animals, but even they're little, but they still showed their true qualities, right? And yes, was sharp as mustard. The little yellow dog was sharp as mustard. Mustard is a color, mustard, flowers. Mustard is also a spice which you add to your burgers or your hot dogs or your sandwiches, right? So it has a very pungent taste. Many of us don't like that taste of mustard. But here it was sharp as mustard. It had that uh, flavor just like that. So what taste tha? Very, you know, like that. The dog was very smart. Little yellow dog was sharp as mustard. Simile, right? Repetition of and, and, anaphora. Okay? So please don't forget the literary devices while we go through this poem. Am I clear? Yes. Let's do one more stanza, then we'll stop for the day. Belinda tickled him. She tickled him unmerciful. Ink, blink, and mustard, they rudely called him Percival. They all sat laughing in the little red wagon at the really old, truly old, cowardly dragon. Very bad. What was the behavior of the animals? They all laughed at him. They called him Percival. 
Percival is the name of a very brave person, right? So, usko chudhane ke liye, they didn't call him custard. They used to make fun of him. They called him Percival. Okay, right? And Belinda also tickled him. Tickled whom? The dragon. And she tickled him unmerciful. That means Belinda is so brave, she's not scared of the dragon. She's tickling when no one would even bother or dare to think of going near the dragon. Belinda would tickle, right? So she would make fun of him. And they all sat laughing in the little red wagon at the really, truly, cowardly dragon. Really, truly, cowardly dragon. So all the animals, the pets, they would laugh at the dragon. Even Belinda would make uh, fun of him and they would call him Percival. So they would call him someone who's very brave just to make fun of him. So he was not Percival. He was not a brave person, but he was a cowardly dragon. Is it clear to hear? It's an easy poem right now to hear. Yes, but the way of telling the poem, it is, it's got us interested. We're really enjoying it. Oh, wow, how nicely it is written. So much of melody, so much rhyme, and it is telling a story. There's going to be a message at the end, and there's going to be a very important message, right? Okay, so we'll uh, stop here for today.